So in today's video, I want to talk about polar patterns. I alluded to this a little bit when I was talking about the uh, dynamics and condensers. So polar patterns are a great tool to use when you're recording and live as well as to choosing the right mic to help you with isolating your source or rejecting other things by using a different polar pattern. Also, the frequency response can change with a different polar pattern. Um, a microphone likes a microphone design sort of au naturel, if you will. Omnidirectional is going to be its flattest response, typically. And so anytime we use... So to create a polar pattern, there's venting, and basically you're, you are out of phase certain sections of the capsule in order to reduce or eliminate the way it picks up from that area of the microphone. And so that's the construction that allows you to develop these different polar patterns. The capsule on its own would be just omnidirectional. It would just pick up from everywhere if it's just a capsule. So we'll start with cardioid, which is the most common. <laughs> it's almost had a microphone roll-off thing here. Um, cardioid is a very standard setup typically used in a live mic situation. Let me switch over to this again. Condenser, you can hear the differences. So this is a cardioid. Cardioid is heart-shaped. So that means that it picks up around the microphone. It rejects around the back of the microphone. So especially, I don't have one of the handhelds, but it's very noticeable there because you have around it, and then you have the back part of the microphone rejects. It's a little harder to see here, but you can hear. So I'm an experiment with polar pattern, all right? Now, I found something very interesting on this microphone. As I go around, you really start to hear it reject, start to go away, start to go away. Okay, it's really gone away pretty good. Now I'm just hearing kind of room, but check this out. As I come back around, it actually picks up quite a lot on the back. I, I was surprised, actually, at how much. It's sort of muffled, but it's clearly a source. Now, as I come back down to here, here's where the rejection really happens, right? So again, cardioid, I'm rejecting here, right? So now as I come back, let's get back on the other side. Again, I'm rejecting, I'm rejecting, I'm rejecting. I'm coming back into the polar pattern. Now I'm in the polar pattern. And you can hear the frequency change, too, as I go around, right? You can hear how it changes in frequency response around the pattern. So if I am using this mic on someone, clearly, if someone is singing, I want them to be here, right? If I have a monitor or if I've got something that's generating sound, I want that to be down here as much as possible, right? So I'm rejecting as much of that as possible. So that is a cardioid pattern. Now I'm going to switch this one. So let me uh, make the switch to its big brother, which is the 414, all right? Check one, two. Now I need a little more gain on this. You can kind of hear the differences in this mic too. It definitely has a different characteristic. I am in cardioid right now. So this has a electronic switchable pattern. I'll try to stay on the mic as I explain that. And so I can switch the pattern right here on the microphone. So I'm going to go to Omni. All right, I am in Omni now. Let's hear what happens when I'm in Omni, okay? You can really hear that what's happening in I'm in Omni is just that. It's pretty darn even all the way around. And it doesn't even, even where this physicalness here is of the microphone is really pretty darn even. And also as I come down here, I'm really not changing much. Okay, that's, that's pretty much picking up everything all the way around the microphone. Up here, I'm even getting pretty good response up here. You know, a little bit of change in frequency response, but certainly not crazy. I'm amazed over here on the side. So again, here's a classic example. Let's think about where would that become a really handy thing. So let's say we have a group of singers, and we want to put those singers on a microphone, and we want them to just stand around the microphone. So basically, anywhere they stand, you're getting a pretty good source. As I'm moving that microphone around, it's really not changing much. A little bit, but it's not crazy. But also, check that out. So we've got a, quite a lot coming from up there. We've got quite a lot coming from down here, more room down here, but still quite a lot of source. So you got to think about that, all right? So where would that be a negative? Well, there's a lot of places that would be a negative, right? You've got an open mic. You've got a lot of other instruments that are being picked up that you don't, you want to isolate. 
well, that's not going to happen. You're going to get a lot of everything. Also, I'm getting a lot more room. If I'm over here, everything I'm doing is getting picked up, right? Okay? Now I'm going to go to the next pattern. So basically, there's a bunch of in-between patterns as well. I'm going to try to get something to more extreme so it's not all these subtle in-betweens. All right, so there's hypercardioid. Hypercardioid's tighter up here, has a little more rejection, but then it has a little bit of picking up on the back side of the microphone. So let's see if we can see what this is doing. Well, that's pretty, pretty dramatically different than when it was in Omni. Now, this is kind of like on that other uh, video I did. Actually, I think we just did it with the 214. Yeah, not the other video, this video. The 214 has that changed frequency response, but pretty good pickup on the back side. Well, we're getting that here. Great rejection here. Totally rejecting this here. All right. Listen as I go down here. Pretty rejecting. Oh, there we get a pickup. There it's picking up, but now it's rejecting. There's the little back part of a supercardioid pattern. All right. It's picking that up right here. So again, we can think about, okay, where would that be good? If I want some serious rejection on the sides, let's say I've got somebody standing right here singing on another mic. I want to try to reject that as much as I can. This gives me a good amount of rejection right here, a really good amount. Okay, now I'm going to go to figure eight. So figure eight is just that, equal on both sides. So clearly you hear that. You can also hear how it goes away in the middle. Again, classic example of how it goes away in the middle. Now, I've heard lots of great ways of utilizing a figure eight. You know, acoustic guitar and vocals. So you're doing your vocal like this, and now your acoustic guitar is right here. It's totally rejecting that acoustic guitar because there is nothing getting picked up here, or very little getting picked up there. It's good rejection. So it's a great tool. That's why a multi-pattern microphone gives you a lot of capabilities and a lot of tools to be able to use to record and to reject and to find where is that best position that's going to give me the most source and the least amount of the things I don't want as I reject the other things. Let's just listen to frequency response as I walk through these polar patterns, all right? I'm going to try to just keep talking as I'm going through them. I'm just keep talking. As I'm clicking through, I keep talking. I'm clicking through. I keep talking, all right? Not huge. A little bit. <clears throat> Not huge, though, but a little bit. You can really hear Omni. I'm in Omni now. The room is loud. It's like the room really jumps out at you. It's a pretty dramatic difference, all right? Okay, so let's switch back here. All right, we're back on this. Now, I have one other microphone I wanted to play with a little bit because this one has something kind of interesting as well. This is a Rode NT2000, and it's a multi-pattern microphone. What they did is they put a variable switch. So not only does it go from Omni to figure eight, but it does it variably. So it doesn't click across to the different patterns. It just moves across to the different patterns, all right? And so really, again, opens up a lot of flexibility in what you can do, all right? Let's listen to this microphone. Ooh, lots of room, right? <laughs> all of a sudden, we got a lot of room and because it's in Omni. It's in Omni now. Now I'm moving it. Boy, you hear that rejection when I get to figure eight? A lot less room. And we got a good amount of rejection over here. And now we got a good even sound on this side. Rejection, 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 rejection. I mean, you totally can hear where it's rejecting. And now it's coming back. Pretty dramatic, right? So if I just hold a note. Oh, I mean, there's a spot it completely goes away. Completely gone. All right. So now as we come back here to cardioid, which is dead center. So now we can hear our rejection here, our rejection. We still have a good, re pretty good rejection in the back, but we do pick up that dead sound again, that darker sound on the back, but nowhere near the presence we get in the front. We do have up here a little bit. All right. So we have a very pretty controlled polar pattern. And now back to Omni. And we have all the way around. Sorry, that's not on me. I went the wrong way. I turned the high pass on. Now we're, you're going to hear the room. 
Yeah, you can hear the room come up as I turn it to Omni. And now we've got complete Omni all the way around, all the way around. A little bit back here, but still pretty darn picking up all the way around. Pretty even all the way around. So that is a variable polar pattern, all right? So again, polar patterns are a great tool. There's a lot of things that you can use for them. I always recommend if you're going to get one mic, get one that has multiple polar patterns because you won't regret it. You won't regret having that option to change and to utilize that as a tool for isolation, a tool for getting the most of the source and the least of the things that you don't want. All right. Hope you enjoyed this and uh, we'll see you next time.